Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the PDST live stream class. Today we're going to be just having a little bit of fun on this, and it's going to be fairly short because I don't want to do too much in here, but what we're going to be doing today is Polax versus Halberd. And I thought this would be a fun one to play with today. We're going to talk about the different parts of the pole arms, as well as some of the use of them. So on the halberd, both the halberd and the pole axe are battle axes. They're variations, a different kind of a family tree. They both have a top spike. They both have an axe. Whereas the poleaxe has the hammerhead and the halberd has a back spike. This would be more for dragging people down, hooking them. Uh, if I was in a line and both of these are melee weapons. But the nice thing about this one is the halberd could be used in a line, whereas the poleaxe is more of a individual fight kind of weapon. The reason I say that is this one, I can do a lot of hooking and chopping straight down, but if he goes to block that and I turn it around, I can pull him off balance to get that in there. He can do the same thing. Don't get me wrong on that. It's just when you see pole axes discussed in historic documents, more often they're referred to the fighting in one-on-one -on -one situations than mass melee. Uh, halberds and bills work really nice in mass melee. The nice thing about the back hook is it's also very useful for taking people off horses or tripping up the horse. So we have the head, we have the ax, the spike, and the back hook. We have the spike or dag, the hammer and the ax. Now this one also has two little spikes on the side. So this has two little spikes on the side. And these represent sharper spikes that you could use for hooking in armor or other pieces of equipment to disrupt their balance. The other nice thing about weighty weapons like this is if somebody is in armor, I can hit the armor and deform it enough to make movement difficult. And then on the back of the weapon, we have the Q. And both of, this one has a back spike, this one does not. The back end is the Q, and he can still use that even without a back spike. Traditionally, it would have a back spike or some kind of weight on there, but who's to say that every single one did? What we're going to do is I'm going to start in a high guard up like this. John is going to start, actually, John's going to start in that guard. I'm going to start in a low guard like this. And I'm actually, I'm keeping it off to the side for a specific reason. Go for my head on this side. Okay, ready? Yep. I've got my cue for beating it to the side. Go ahead, do that again. I step under it and I can beat it to the side or do it again. I can step the other way to drive it down. And that's why I'm taking a low guard since he took a high guard. If he took that low guard and I started with that high guard, I have things I can do. And I want you to play with these and think about them here. So for here, I'm gonna bring it forward with my cue, my butt spike then transfer into the target. So we do that again. And that's why don't just volta stable, step to the side. Got it. Right? Now he can still cover that. And that's where we get our coverage in to really try to capture balance. So let's look at what just happened. Okay. He was in a low guard, I was in a high guard. I actually widened my hands up just a little bit on my halberd. 
because I wanted the extra space to be able to drive that point in. Well, I don't want to be too close because mm -hmm. I'm here and that's what you're worried about yep. or a straight thrust to the face. So as I come into the face, I then pull that down. Then I bring my top hand to my back hand with a strike at the arm. Let's do that again. So I'm here. Mm -hmm. Now he's smart. He sees this coming. As I, I threaten, he starts to cover. I shift. He steps towards the head of my weapon with his cue and then hits me in the head. Boom. So there's the first part. Let's do that again. Okay. Ready? Ready. Now, yeah, I have a spike at his head. But did you step with that? Hmm? Did you step? With the cut? Yeah. No. I want you to step with the cut. Sure. Let's do it again. Ready? Ready. Oh, look what happens when we step with the cut. Mm -hmm. And that really throws off my ability to go to where I want to be. Let's do that again. Ready? Ready. So that's why I need to get my action. Now, this goes back to the half sorting that we talked about in another class. Let's do that again. Ready? Ready. I come in. He covers that. Now, if I try to just lift up the point to protect myself, no, keep going. Mm -hmm. He's hooked that and he's sitting down onto it. And because he's stepping, he's taking my whole body off angle because I was trying to lift up the head of my axe. If I want the head of my axe up, what do I do? You push down with the other hand. Yeah. So let's try that. Ready? Ready. And that takes it right out of the bath there. And that's, that's where I get. Mm -hmm. Then I just stab back into his throat with the back spike. Let's do that again. Okay. Ready? And this one I'm doing with the Volta Stable because I don't have time to cover that. Now, what's the weakness I have right here? Um, would that be the angle that you're at and... No, it would be my groin. Yeah. Just drive the hammer straight up into yeah, my crotch. And then just pop that right on yep. up there. I, I promise you, if you hit somebody in the crotch with the hammer of a poleaxe, you will get their attention. I do not doubt that at all. Even with armor. So, ready? Ready. Here, here, here. Yep. Yeah, I can hit you, but if you volt the stable, no, the other way. Yep. I can glance it off my armor there. And I still take that. But Even if you don't hit me with that, you bring this up for mm -hmm. a thrust to the crotch. Right. Yep. So it can either be a hammer blow or a thrust to the crotch. Because I have the multiple tools at the top line here. If I'm out of range for the one tool, I'm probably going to be in range for the second. Correct. Tool. And we always line up our targets. I was about to ask on that, actually. If you don't mind. Yeah, please. We're not, we always talk about lining up our targets so that, um, because the other person's smart, they don't want to get hit. So we set a next line. If I step to cut to your head, uh -huh. if I just do that, well, I'm not lined up to anything else over here, right? Right. But if I also do that same thing here, yep. I'm now lined up to your leg, right? Yep. Or and to it, your no, cut. stay there, stay yep. there. And if I try to get out of the way, now you're lined up to my crotch. To, to your crotch, yep. Because you're lined up to the inside of my thigh, not, not the, the outside. outside. And if I'm in armor, this is another thing. The queeze, the thigh cover, it's called a queeze. The queeze stops about here, about mid-thigh. But because it stops at about mid-thigh, let's say, let's do that again. Mm -hmm. So you strike at me, and I set that aside. I'm here, I've got this, and I might be able to take the thrust on the outside of my armor. Mm -hmm. But if I step back, you're now going to the inside. Inside, once again. And I have no protection on that part of my thigh. And if you go all the way through because you don't hit me, now you have a hook. I was going to ask. Yeah. I've got that ability there now. And if you do that with the axe side, 
you now have the beak of the ax driving into the unprotected back of the knee. So this gives you lots of hooking opportunities. But another way to look at the adding to that here, we're also in a way lining up each individual tool as part as part of that, right? Yes. So we're not just lining up targets, we're now lining up tools when we look at things like uh, the pole arms like these. Correct. Right? When they have multiple pieces, it doesn't take a lot to line them up. Mm -hmm. But I need to remember the mechanics of this fight, which is if I want my head down, I don't necessarily push my head down, I pull my cue up and that forces my head down. Um, I'm gonna hit the head of your weapon. So this is me pushing down on it. Ready? Ready. We get that. Almost sounded like something broke. Almost. But look at this. Whoa. You see how that pulled him Eesh. straight down? Do that again, we can go back up. With my lead hand, I drive him out. With my cue hand. And then I'm lined up for another action. So it's not about the strength of your arm in pushing the weapon down. It's about using the mechanics of the lever to move the other end. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So let's go from the top. I'm up high. He's down low. Don't do anything. Mm -hmm. There's my win. Now he's going to win it. And they keep going down, go yeah. around to throw me off balance. And because, let's do that again. Yep. When I say hold freeze. Yes, sir. Okay, now he's got that coverage. Go ahead and hit me with your ax. Just bring your ax head over. You don't need to go that extreme. Okay. Don't, don't exaggerate it that much. Just, he leaves my weapon, right? You yep. see that? Do that again. Yes, he hits me, but he leaves my defense in place. But if he uses his cue to move his, the head of his weapon, he throws me off balance and has a cleaner strike at me. Yeah? True. So that's why it's so important that we use the mechanics of leverage, not just the strength of your arms. That being said, you're going to have to work to be able to swing these because these suckers are heavy. Very. So let's do it again. This time I'm going to win. And I just broke his arm and then stabbed him in the throat, just to make sure. And what I did is if I was just going for a straight blow, my hands would be here because as Filippo Vadi would say, strike him mightily. No, I'm sorry, not Vadi. Um, Jute de la Hache, the uh, French manuscript for Polacks written by an Italian master. With a mighty blow, strike him with a mighty blow. This would be my mighty blow. But I've seen the way he's holding it. I understand what he's got. He could easily just knock that to the side. Step towards your left. Mm -hmm. And then, this, yeah, I've got, I can be in trouble. So instead of being here with my hands kind of close together, I actually extend my hand a little bit. And the reason I do that is I can bring this forward, but then as he goes to cover, I pull that down and that lines me up perfectly for his arm. And then I can stab him. All right, one more time. So we start here, I slide up, I cue, boom. But now we're gonna figure out how he protects himself. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Prefer to avoid the broken arm? I would prefer to avoid the broken arm. And the tracheotomy? And the tracheotomy is really the big part there. I can survive a broken arm. So I come through. He goes for the bait. I strike it. He now steps to his right and uses his cue. But how do you get your cue down? I actually have to lift my um, right hand. Yeah, no. Uh, just use your cue to defend yourself. Okay. He's still in line. Go back. Now use the head of your axe. That also removes the target. So in the action of the offense, you have a defensive void of the target built in. And if you 
don't think about that. You're always going to leave something in line. You're always going to leave something there. And what's the best defense? Don't be there. Be it do an avoidance. So let's do that again. So I'm here. I widen up. I thrust. I cut. He covers and he hits me in the head. So let's do it one more time. You win this. Okay. Now that was too much. Uh, too much. Too much cue. Yep. Because as you pulled it down, you drove me into your leg, which gives yep. me a hook. So use more of the head. This right here. To do the action. Good. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there's nothing there for me to hit. Mm -hmm. Feel the difference? I do. One more time. So you're successful. Okay. Not so that cue position there. Yeah. And it's really hard to not use the cue because you see this attack coming in and you want to beat it out of the way as quickly as possible. Quick is not always the right answer. And that's a hard thing to wrap your head around, especially mm -hmm. when you have an ax coming at you. Would you agree? Yeah. So we're here. I do this. I begin my action, he pushes that down, and then hits me. Good, now I'm gonna counter it. Okay. Ready? Ready. I open up for my preparation. I thrust by sliding through my cue hand, step, use that. Now as he goes here, I push my cue up with a volta stable. And by pushing my cue up, I release the hook of my halberd off the shaft of his pole axe. Let's switch sides. Let's okay. do it again, please. Ready? Ready. Now, so uh, actually, mm -hmm. let's do it again. Uh, when you do the initial defense, hold. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're in here. I prepare myself. I come through, I hook, he def you defend. Now, stay there. I drop the head of my axe to try to get my cue into place. Or, yeah, look at that. I hook on the haft, and he just pulls me off balance and hits me anyways. Because I tried to, um, I don't know how to say that. Let's do it again. Sure. I know what's happening. I'm just trying to figure out the language for it. A hard thing to always get right. So I present, I threaten, I counter strike. Then as I do this, because I'm trying to pull the head of my haft back to hit him, I get hooked. But instead, let's do it again. And that covers me. Then I can thrust into the throat with the back spike, but we're both in armor. And that's still a threat to me. So what I'm going to do is step onto his foot, hook my, hook my back spike. And I'm not going to go all the way. Let me get Appreciate off your foot. It. And then how do I throw you? By that's stepping, right. By stepping and extending this arm. I'm not going to step. You're not going to step? I'm not going to step. Because if I step, where am I going to step? Mm -hmm. And now you can jam me with that. Okay. So I'm going to stay here, and then I'm just going to lift the head up. You good? Good. So, yeah. I want to talk about that entry. Remember, we're in armor. This is like a car crash. There's nothing gentle about it. It is subtle but it is not gentle. And there's a distinction between the two. So let's do that again. From the top? From the top. I'm here. I see him prepare. So I get that preparation. Doesn't feel like I've really done anything, does it? Not a whole lot, but I'm I was then, reading the roadmap here as we're talking about yeah. this. Now I step forward and I hit him. And as I do it, I drive. I'm gonna get off his foot so Thank I don't you. hurt his toes. I drive. It, look what happened to his balance. That's where I take my secondary step. 
So it's not that I'm stepping on his foot and then taking a secondary step. You're, I am driving through the space in which you are standing. You are currently. forcing the, the space for your secondary step through the drive. Yes. Yeah, and I'm using the weight of my body. Subtle action because you're destabilizing me, but it's not the soft or gentle action because you're forcing me out of that area that I'm in, right? And how am I destabilizing you? You're disrupting my shoulders over my hips there. So you're pushing me over and you've anchored that one part. That's of part of it. The other part is I'm rolling you over your ankle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And if I push your shoulders out, just move that back foot. Easy. Yep. But if I go here and I get that little movement mm -hmm. and then I step. Very different position. Because now you're rolling mm -hmm. over the ankle. And the best way to disrupt their balance, their position, their strength is to roll them over the ankle because now they have no support and everything starts at the ground. Let's go and do that again. Yes, sir. Ready? Ready. And boom. And there's my strike. You good? Good. Now, the nice thing about doing this is that as I'm coming forward with my butt spike, what's he doing? Turning his head, trying to, no, no, don't lean back. Turn your head. Okay. Because if, you, if you're wearing a helmet, they're designed to have glancing surfaces. It will ring your bell. Make no mistake about it. But the point won't penetrate because it has a glancing surface. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. What you're talking about is because of the rounded shape of the helmet system there right now, what I'm actually wanting to do, which is you're talking about actually rolling in here, so I'm actually going to take it on the curb yeah. of, my hel the, uh, of the left side of my helmet right here. And how counterintuitive is that? And that's because you need to understand the equipment that you have on hand, right? Yes. And because of that curve, let's do that again, and I want you to turn into it like that. Okay. You're going to be amazed at what happens. So we're here. Mm -hmm. I go up here. I begin my thread, I counter, I go through here, I step forward, you turn your head. And what I'm actually doing is I'm countering that push of yours, aren't I? And now lean into my, lean into your knee. Oh look, you just stopped me from here, because mm -hmm. I can't do it. Yeah. It's amazing how subtle the use of armor is. People think that it's just two tanks that are, uh, and bash into each other. Sometimes. I won't deny it. But it doesn't have to be. And well, that's what we're seeing right we're here. We're talking about the same subtlety that we find in the science of a boxing match, actually. Right. Here. Or in the science of the sword fight. Absolutely, where um, a millimeter is the changing definition between loss or victory. Right. Or a dagger fight. Mm -hmm. Let's do that one more time. And then you're going to counter me. Okay. Ready? Ready. Ah, uh, you were a little bit late, I was on, late that. on that. Yeah. Because look at this, I've got the advantage. Turn your fate, turn your mouth into me. No, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. You will get busted lip. Yeah. You will. Perhaps a broken nose. But we're talking medieval style combat. If you haven't tasted your own blood, you don't deserve to be on the field. Not my words. Just saying. That was the advice of a. 15th century knight. A squire should see his blood flow and spit his teeth in preparation for warfare. It's a whole different world when you're talking armor. Yeah. So now we're going to do that again, and you're going to actually win this one. Okay. Kind of curious how? Let's find out, shall we? <laughs> so we're here. This usually doesn't happen, FYI. I prepare myself. I propose a threat. I give my true attack. I go through here. You turn your head in. I glance off. Now, what I want you to do is hook my back knee and step back with this foot. Well, no, I'm on that foot. You can't. Mm -hmm. So as you hook my knee, pull back, and then drive down. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm actually doing here is when I first pull you, 
there's the buckle. Yep. Now I'm actually keep maintaining pressure on your leg here, aren't I? And pushing it to here. So you're, yeah. how do you get your back spike? There. Nope. You're moving this part. Mm -hmm. move, move your cue. Yeah. That's yeah. And that will, because you initiated the buckle of my knee, that forces my knee to cave. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Let's do it again. How's your mouth? Mouth is fine. Ready? Ready. Oh, nice. Hit my knee. And then boom. boom. And then, yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. And then, so let's go back here. So okay. you've got me there. And you've just buckled my knee. Now, this foot steps straight forward in between my legs. So right in between your yep. legs here. Yep. So, got me? Yep, I got you. Yep, good. Wearing all that armor. I'm going to... Keeping in mind that I also have the same mass of armor on me, you're going to catapult it off that spot. Not catapult it. Mm -hmm. I'm more going to crumple like demolition of a building. Aha. Uh -huh. Which is actually worse. Because you, you would actually prefer getting moved further from yeah, me. Yeah, because I can get my feet under me. Yeah. But when you walk through me with my knee here, you're, I'm, you're actually going to drop me right there. Mm -hmm. And that is even worse of a position. Because now my knee is in this position as I go down. And you're going to fold to that direction. And so that's how we are taking them out walking. All you're doing is taking a step. Mm -hmm. But the first thing you have to do is buckle their structure. Let's do that again. Ready? Ready. And you notice I'm taking my time in preparation. If he attacks me, go ahead and attack me. I can still defend myself. But I want him to not necessarily realize what I'm doing yet. Oh, there it is. And then step. Yep. Yeah. And that's it for me. And I'm on my back, on my side, with possibly a busted knee, a torn ACL, if we're doing it hard and fast. That's why you won't see this kind of thing in modern tournaments. It's just really dangerous in that space for that. That being said, if we are looking at Battle of the Nations, ACL, IMCF, any of those international combat games, I can't thrust with the cue of my pole axe. But what it, let's do it again. I can do the same thing. It's the exact same drill. So instead of being a thrust, it's thrust a cut. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's that strike to the arm. And then as he tries to counter that, now go ahead and hit me slow. Yeah. Where, where are you driving? I'm driving actually into your, into your uh, queue. You're hitting yourself. And I'm put, using that to hit me. Yeah. So this can translate to the armored combat modern sports. Mm -hmm. There will need to be changes, of course. But this is an idea of halberd versus poleaxe. And with that, I want to stop here. Thank you for your help with that. Very welcome, sir. What did you learn today? Um, so actually keeping in mind here right now, who's the most important person in the world? Me. Right? I am. No, it was me. Actually, it's me. It's okay. A lot of people got that confused. <laughs> um, but actually keep this in mind here right now. Whenever you put a new tool in your hand, don't just hunt for your principles, but remember one thing and one thing more important than all of that is create your feel within it so you actually understand which hand's beginning initiating that move because you may think that you're actually doing that because you're used to doing half sorting with the sword but it's not the same thing no why not because you have a different length mm -hmm. you have a different weight and you actually have a different material right now i can do this action yeah but i can't really do that on a sword because so, i have no quillin so understanding that when we're doing our half sorting techniques here right where i'm this is bringing my point, my cue down, not my point up. When, when, when we're looking at this technique, this is bringing my head down here, or it's bringing my cue up, depending again on my technique here. Yeah. Um, first, feel your tool was the big thing that came to point. 
listen to your yeah. weapon. It's not about the fear of you smashing that axe head into my arm. It was about the fact that I have a different tactile feel of my weapon that was like, okay, so I'll lift this up. No, you're, you're not. You're not lifting this because it doesn't feel like a sword. Yeah. I'd lift it maybe the same that I would with a sword. It doesn't work. There's a complete different mechanic within that. While the same. That makes sense to anybody. <laughs> So the idea of halberd versus poleaxe can be a fun fight. There are still people practicing in armor and doing these kinds of things. And I will tell you from experience, fighting with a poleaxe, it's a lot of fun. When you mess up, you know it. But it's a lot of fun. And with that, I want to thank you. So what we'll do is we'll hold our weapon in our left hand, turn sideways, and we'll just salute with hands. So thank you for being with us. Stay safe, stay sane, and we'll see you on the other side of this. All the best to you all. Boom. Take care, everyone. How'd you like that one?